Hey everyone, welcome back to Take You Forward. So in the previous video, we did solve the MCM problem using the memorization technique. But we saw that it was partially accepted and uh, that was because there was auxiliary stack space involved and we were using recursion. So in this video, we will be learning the tabulation method or the bottom up DP method for MCM. So what have I told for tabulation? Let's what were the rules for tabulation if you remember from the previous lectures guys if you do if you're not following this db playlist man you're missing a lot of things please follow from the first lecture then you'll understand the rules and if you follow the rules it becomes very simple what were the rules copy the base case without even thinking anything just copy the base case so there was a dp of n cross n that we used so let's declare this what was the base case so if you remember the code let's go back to the code so if I show you the code, you remember what did the code say? If i is equal to equal to j. If i is equal to equal to j, which means whatever i is, if it is 1, this has to be 1. If it is 2, this has to be 2. If it is 3, this has to be 3. So for every similar set of i's, that means for every similar set of mat single matrix, uh, matrix or matrices, whatever you can call it, For every similar, because what does f of 1, 1, what does f of 1, 1 represents? Minimum cost to multiply matrix 1 to matrix 1, and that's 0. So dp of i, i equal to 0. That's what the base case is. Minimum cost required to multiply the matrix with itself, because you never multiply the matrix with itself. That's 0. Done. Write down the changing parameters is what I say. Write down the changing parameters. So what were the changing parameters or changing states? One was very simple, i. The other one was j. And the third step, copy the recurrence. Okay, let's understand how will i go and how will j go. So where did we start i from? I can be like Striver, we started i from 1 and we moved it ahead. Because if you remember the initial call was made to f of 1 comma n minus 1, remember? Over here. The initial call, where did I go? Yeah, initial call was made to this guy, f of 1 comma n minus 1. So I know one thing, uh, the i started from 1 and then it went on moving ahead. So what you can say is, okay, we do it opposite. n minus 1 till 0. n minus 1 till 0. Okay, perfect. So what is top down? Let's understand what is top down and what is bottom up in order to write the records. Top down means generically, generically, bigger problem like over here the bigger problem was you took the entire set of data like if you remember the recursion tree you took the entire set of data then you broke it down into smaller problems so that's what top down is top down is very simple bigger problem into smaller problem and generally the smaller problem is nothing but the base case that's the base case. So bigger problem into smaller problem. That's what top down is or that's what generally recursion you write. You try to break the bigger problem into smaller problem and then then, then you go back and uh, get the answer for bigger problem. What is bottom up? That's very, un, uh, that's, that is something which you need to understand. Bottom up is the opposite. You take the smaller problem. Yes, you take the smaller problem. And then build up, build up, build up to get the bigger one. Get the bigger one. So what is the bigger one over here? What is the bigger one? So I can say the bigger one is nothing but you're looking for a large set of matrices to be multiplied. Looking for a large set of matrices to be multiplied. So if I is, uh, where is the tabulation? I got lost. Yeah. So if i is n minus 1 to 0, because that's very obvious, because 
will go from the bottom only. So if i is n minus 1 to 0, what about j? You can be like Strayber. One thing I know for sure, that j is starting from, where's the j running? How did you call the function? n minus 1. So ideally, j is running from n minus 1 till 0. So apparently, uh, you would have done the opposite. Okay, let's write down the opposite, which is 0 to n minus 1. But does that make sense? And the answer to that is no. Why? Because we know one thing, i is something which will always be on the left of j. i is something which is always be on the left of j. So how can you always start j from 0? So can I say, can I say, this is where I need to be a bit practical not to start from the right of i instead of going till 0 to n minus 1. So yes, written both the loops. Just make sure this is i plus 1 because there has to be some set of data. J cannot go to the left. Written. The next step is copy the recurrence and you will be done with the tabulation. As simple as it can get if you have written the recursive solution. So what I'll do is I will just go back to the code and this is how the code looks. So let's uh, quickly change this to probably dp of n n. Okay. For the next thing I said for int i will go n minus 1 till i greater than 1 rather. Uh, why not 0? Because if you remember I was from n minus 1 till 1 and not 0. That's what you will do. And j can go from i plus 1 till j uh, lesser than n and j plus plus. Now the next thing, just make sure you copy paste the entire recurrence. Yeah, that's what you just need to do. Copy paste the entire recurrence guys. Done. And instead of f, just make sure instead of rather f, you copy something like dp i k. Perfect. And over here you just have dp k plus 1 j. Now once you've done this, this is what you write. And over here you return dp of 1 n minus 1. And you can just omit this off. That's what you will generically return. Okay, the base case, I forgot to write the base case. So it's i equal to 1 till i lesser than n i plus plus. And again, the dp of i, i equal to 0. Perfect. I think that should be pretty much it. Yeah, looks like this is this is what the code will be. So I'm trying to run this. I'm getting all the correct answer. I'm trying to submit this. This time probably we will not get partially accepted. This will be completely accepted. It is. It is. Uh, it's two o'clock in the night. Cool guys. Uh, easy, isn't it? Once you write this, it's just the opposite. Copying recurrence and understanding the base case is getting the opposite of IJ like. Whatever you're running the IJ in recursion is just the opposite that you need to do. I just need to be a bit practical while you write J. Just think about edge cases because if you have to have run, run this from zero, then then there's a problem, right? So just make sure you, you be a bit practical when you try to uh, write the for loops. And if you are, then you can easily solve this. Also, time complexity, uh, n cube, space, n square, no auxiliary space being used. So guys, I hope you have understood the tabulation once. Just in case you did, please, please, please make sure you like this video. And if you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing to us. And yeah, uh, with this, let's wrap up this video and meet you in the next one. Till then, bye bye, take care.